year one, year one, the figure was on display in my cabinet. It was like this. And then year three, it would bend further. And then eventually, this figure can no longer remain plugged into the base. Like, you plug the figure into the base, it would just pop and fall down. Hi and welcome back to the channel Steven right here for today yeah a little bit of a sharing session from me I'm going to share with you guys 10 skill figures which I kind of regretted buying now I may have been collecting figures for at least 15 years by now but over the years there were some bad purchase decisions part of it was that I wanted to photograph the anime figure because I had ideas but after that after I'm done photographing it I found that I did not like the figure as much Things like that happen, right? And what one would think, did I buy any Griffin Enterprise figures? Yes, I did, right? Actually bought a few Griffin figures in the past, but this Haruhi figure over here is not one of them, like not the one I regretted buying. This was fine. This one was about 60 US dollars or so, less than that, including shipping back then. And for a very tall 1x7 scale figure over here, this is like 26 or 27 cm tall, not the worst Griffin figure ever. But if there is one Griffin figure which I really regretted buying, I bought it just because it was really cheap. Here we go, the first figure I regretted buying. Uh, this Iki Tauzen Kano Uncho figure, Aru Line, as Griffin calls it, 1x6 scale wet uniform version, right? Uh, if I remembered correctly, the reason why I bought this skill figure uh, was I just wanted uh, proper skill figures. Like I did not have much budget when I was just starting out collecting figures. I think it was within my the first one or two years I began collecting figures, right? I wanted some nice skill figures, kind of hot characters and so on. So I was looking for the cheapest thing you can find in a local figure store. And... This Griffin figure caught my attention because on paper it is a 1x6 skill and the local shop owner was selling it for like 40 US dollars. Yeah, no more than 40 US dollars. So I was thinking 1x6 skill, 40 USD, that is that is a good deal. So I bought it online by the way. Local store but, but online. And when the figure arrived, oh boy, it was bad. <laughs> I mean, at least... It was only $40 in today's uh, currency conversion rate, right? I mean, uh, one by six scale on paper, but the figure was so small that it is actually smaller than my one by eight scale Black Rock Shooter figure by Good Smile Company. I'm not even joking over here. <laughs> That one by six scale label by Griffin Enterprise is a complete, complete scam. It is a scam, right? Uh, I have misplaced this figure somewhere. Like, I don't even know where I keep it in my cabinet anymore. Maybe it is still around, but somewhat I managed to retrieve the base of that figure. Yeah, this is the base of that Kano Unjo figure. You can see this base is almost the same size as this Haruhi figure. And this is exactly what Griffin Enterprise was really notorious for. Every single figure they make, they get the exactly same base, except for this name plate in front. Yeah. I purchased like 4 or 5 Griffin Enterprise figures in my lifetime as a figure collector but the absolute worst is this Kano Uncho figure. Is she still around? Did I sell it? No, I did not sell this figure. I think I retrieved her spear to be used as a prop in figure photography but where is the figure now? I don't even know. Maybe I stashed it somewhere in my junk yard or something like that. Yeah. Like, I do not even want to remember this figure even existed, but now because I'm making this figure, uh, this video today, I mean, yeah, I am I just had to share with you guys about how bad this figure is, right? Because the figure was very small, it also means the detail level is poor, yeah. And it only had the slightest bit of fan service. Even the exposed opai isn't anything to shout about. Like, it was pretty disappointing even for an edgy figure, yeah. This is exactly how many Kano Uncho figures Griffin Enterprise had made over the years before they went bankrupt in year 2019. So many of them. And I just had to pick one of their very worst Kano Uncho figures. I could have opted for some of the better uh, looking ones, right? But because that one was so cheap, I went for it and it was a bad idea. Yeah. I guess you get what you pay for. Mm. 
Okay, uh, moving on to the second figure, I really regretted buying. Okay, this one was a bit of a controversial one to me. Okay, uh, this 1x7 scale Kuro Yoki Hime figure, Black Lotus from Excel World at 1x7 scale by uh, Max Factory, Death by Embracing. Okay, uh, this figure went for around 10,300 yen before Texas, and back then Texas was like 5%. So this was a 10,800 yen figure. If I was not mistaken, I pre ordered this from a local figure store, received her in perfect condition. But how do I put it? This was a very well made figure by Max Factory. Excel World was a pretty popular anime back then, and was it? Was the author the same guy who did Sword Art Online? I'm not too sure, but Excel World was frequently compared to Sword Art Online back then, if I wasn't mistaken. Maybe because they kind of isekai into a gaming world, like the concept is similar, maybe because of that, but whether they are the same author, I'm not too sure. And between Sword Art Online and Excel World, personally, I liked Excel World a lot more. People hated Excel World because the main character is extremely unattractive and it is no understatement to call the main character the guy a fat pig. Yeah, because he was short, he was fat, and he was unpopular. The only reason why he became popular was because he was successful in this uh, game, right? Excel World. But putting aside the guy that is not the main focus over here, the problem with this character Kuro Yukihime or uh, Black, Black, Black Snow Princess, I think, was that I wanted a figure of her with that um, avatar, that Black avatar, that robot mecha avatar next to her. And no one made a figure of Kuro Yukihime with that robot. This was the closest thing that we have, this one by Max Factory. I think Kotobukiya and Good Smile each made a figure of Kuro Yukihime but in her butterfly costume. Yeah, but not this mecha costume. This was what I wanted but no figure brands made a figure so I had no choice. I bought this Max Factory figure over here. You also have the option to display the figure completely with her legs, right? There is a pair of legs, the bottom half of the body included with the figure. But if you display her completely with her legs, then you couldn't attach that robot thing behind her, surrounding her. Which really sucked. You can display her in either one form, complete form or bust form with the robot, but not both together. Personally, I think Max Factory should have made her completely standing up Right, with that robot behind her also standing upright. But Max Factory had to follow the art style of the cover novel this character was based on. So, ah, uh, it was unfortunate, right? So, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this figure over here. I appreciate it for that avatar behind her, but I don't like collecting, yeah, vast figures. Moving on to the third figure, I regretted buying this figure of Kurei Naino Aria. 1x7 skill from Occultic 9, which is a seasonal anime, one single season, 12 episodes, that is it, right? This was made by Kotobukiya, 12,000 yen came out in year 2017. I bought this figure simply because I kind of liked the character design and I had a nice photography idea. And this figure was considered cheap at 12,000 yen, so I picked one up, I did figure photography work, yeah, this one right here. And the photography work was kind of okay, like, you could say that I was not very happy with this with this photography work. Maybe it could have been a bit better, but still, that was the main goal of buying this figure. I wanted to photograph it. And after I photographed the figure, I tried to sell it, and until today, I wasn't able to sell it. That was when I started to realize where seasonal anime characters are a really bad purchase, because yeah, people forget about their waifu after the anime finishes screening, and if you buy figures like this, you need to really love the figure. Otherwise, if you regret buying it and you want to sell it later, it is almost impossible to sell it, even if you heavily discount the item. Yeah, I discounted it twice and still there were no takers. So until today, this figure is still in my collection somewhere in my room back at home. Mm. Moving on to the next figure, I kind of, yeah, actually regretted buying. Once again, I bought this figure of Shinjo Akane by Mega House uh, from Double SS Gridman for the very same reason I bought that uh, figure of Kurei Naino Aria earlier from Occultic 9. This figure by Mega House 
is the ultimate example of overpricing. Yeah. Uh, is the figure with me? Uh, yes, the figure is right here. There we go, right? So this is the figure by Mega House, and this wasn't cheap. This figure was 12,800 yen. Personally, this figure felt like it should not exceed 9,000 yen. And that was exactly the price you are paying for if you buy her today. Like, she has bargain bin really badly. I paid nearly full price for this figure right when she came out because I had uh, an amazing photography idea, figure photography, which I really wanted to do no matter the cost. And yeah, I actually made a video on this figure many years ago, the photography video, the link is right up here. Yeah, go and check it out. Yeah, just for that one uh, project, I bought this figure. And then eventually, a few months, just two or three months after I bought this figure at near full price, she bargained bin to eight or nine thousand yen. Yeah. And personally, I do think this figure is worth no more than nine thousand yen because this figure is way too tiny, way too small. Mega House listed this figure as a nun scale, but the height is 14 centimeters. So this is closer to one by eight scale. But even for a one by eight figure, this feels relatively small in a way, right? One more problem that increased the price, the cost of this figure was that, as you can see, the figure was so small, right? Like this big. But the box is so big in comparison just because of her uh, gaming chair or office chair that was separated in the box and there was so much space wasted in this uh, packaging over here. Like 40% of this box is empty. So it was really unnecessary. It made the figure pretty expensive to ship back then. Not to mention the figure was so mid and so average. This figure, while well, there is nothing quite wrong, the quality control, the paintwork, the sculpting was fine, but it really gave me a bad impression on Mega House. Like I will forever remember Mega House as that Bandai figure brand who overprices everything they make. Yeah, and that is still true today. Alright, now we shall move on to the next figure right here. Okay, this one was rough. This one is really rough, right? Uh, this figure of Kasumi Gaoka Otaha from Saikano by Good Smile Company, 1x7 scale, really cheap. This was 9,000 yen back then in year 2015. And she was re-released in year 2019 for an additional 1,000 yen. Mine was from the first release in year 2015. And the only reason why I bought this figure of Kasumi Gaoka Otaha was because I needed to complete the set. Megumi Kato was amazing, the one by Good Smile. It was an amazing figure. I would highly recommend you guys to get it. And then, uh, Ariri. Ariri was also amazing. I think you can find one now for about 15,000 yen or so. Ariri was also an amazing figure. I was very happy with that figure, right? And then I had both Kato and Ariri. I don't have Otaha. This Otaha is supposed to be a part of this trio of figures of Saekano from Good Smile Company. So I kind of forced myself to buy this figure of Otaha just to feel complete, just to complete the set. And boy, this figure of Otaha really disappointed me because I don't know. Because this figure of Otaha does not look like Otaha at all. At least the Otaha I know from anime, right? I watched the anime and so on. Of course, my suspicion over here is that this Otaha figure was based on some light novel or manga cover. Like the art style on the manga cover is different from the art style in anime, right? The anime adaptation was drawn differently. And that is what I was used to. So when I bought this Otaha figure, just to feel complete, and looking at her face, oh, I was unhappy. Yeah, I was seriously unhappy. And to make things worse, this figure was re-released in 2019, making it even harder to sell it as a pre-owned unit without losing a huge amount of money. And even if I were to sell it at a huge discount, as far as I can recall, nobody wanted to buy it because there are so many better Otaha figures by now. Even Good Smile made a bikini swimsuit figure of her, which was like seven or 8,000 yen, and that one was way better than this version of Otaha over here. Yeah, so I have sold my Saekono figures. I sold every week. I sold Kato to a good friend of mine. He is taking good care of it. But this Otaha, there are no takers. Yeah, 
So I am the kind of person who prefers to complete a set I don't like being left hanging. Like there are three or five figures in a set. I buy two or four of them and one character missing. I am very unhappy about it. I want to complete the set. And this is the end result. I ended up with figures that I, I am able to get rid of and also one or two figures that nobody wanted to buy. Yeah. The next one, Dark Angel Olivia. Of course, if you have watched my videos for a while, my channel for a while, you know this figure is going to make it into this list. Okay, uh, I have dissed on this figure so many times that I'm not done completing yet. Okay, this figure I bought the first release back in 2015. The good news, somewhat good news was that this figure was really cheap back then. Well, my current, my country's currency was really strong and the Japanese yen was really weak simultaneously. So this figure cost me like 80 or 90 US dollars back then, including shipping. Yeah, it was insane, right? And this figure was even re-released twice, 2017 and 2021. I bought the first release from a local seller once again, a friend of mine actually, he runs a figure store. This figure, in terms of the paintwork, the quality control, it was actually very good for the standards of Kotobukiya. Back then, in the mid-2010s, Kotobukiya was famous for infamous for quality control issues. They were like Fed's company 10 years ago, right? Uh, I don't like them that much back then. But I still gave this figure a chance because of how beautiful it is, based on these product pictures at least. And yeah, truly the figure was very well made very well painted. I was very happy with the figure. The box was massive on this one, one of the biggest boxes I had. In fact, this one single figure, this Olivia, made me change my opinion about Kotobukiya, about the quality of their paint work, right? But this figure has a severe flaw, a fatal flaw, which I doubt Kotobukiya has rectified it in the re-release versions. Yeah, the foot pack, right? So this figure, Kotobukiya cut corners on the materials. They use cheap materials. They use those rubbery uh, PVC material. And as a result, this figure was immensely heavy. It was very heavy. The wings weigh so much that the moment you completed assembling the figure, you can feel the stress on her right leg, which is the only leg connected to the base. And to make things worse, Kotobukiya permanently glued this figure to the base. Yeah. The figure is stuck to the base out of the box. I think Kotobukiya was really trying to hide the fact that they did not use any metal reinforcement on the figure. So they decided to glue the figure to the base and underneath the base, there was a screw over there to mislead you into thinking there was metal being used in the figure, but in fact, there weren't any. And one day, this figure broke on its own. It snapped from the base on its own, right? I left the figure displaying on my desk in my room and only to come back to the figure one day where the figure is lining on the desk like, what happened? And then, yeah, the foot pack was broken just like that. The figure was so heavy that it broke off from the base on its own while sitting on a desk. And to my horror, when the figure was broken, I found out that there was no metal rod, no metal foot pack inside, only a solid plastic block. So this one single figure by Kotobukiya made me change my opinion about them from bad to good, back to bad again. Yeah, since the figure was so heavy, I had to spam a lot of super glue and I mean a lot just to get the figure glued back to the base. And even so, while the figure is back on the base, yeah, you will see a lot of glue stains surrounding her feet. And yeah, some of the paint has leached out. Like the paint was fading because of the chemical reaction between the excessive amount of glue affecting the gold paint around her feet area. Basically, the market value, the resale value of the figure is all gone. The figure is permanently damaged. I was very salty about it. I complained about it nonstop. And then one of my friends, yeah, uh, Davis Gunn, he was featured in my episode 2 of uh, my ghosting video. He said that he still wants the figure because he was just getting into the hobby of collecting anime figures and he is open to getting figures for cheap. Even though the figure is slightly damaged because that isn't just the foot area, the rest of the figure is still in perfect condition. So yeah, sure, I sold the figure to him for like 50 or 60 US dollars. 
So I lost about 30 bucks on the figure, but in the end, I was able to get rid of the figure. Yeah. Moving on to my next regret full purchase. Yeah, Barbara Pack, Kotobukiya 1x7 skill from Genshin Impact. Let's make it clear, I bought this figure just because I wanted to review it on this channel. And that was the only reason. I wasn't interested in Barbara Pack simply because, yeah, the character design is like, uh, not very attractive to me. It feels really, really generic, right? Compared to the likes of Ningguang or Ke Qing, they are very majestic looking figures. This Barbara feels pedestrian in comparison. And you could say the same for Lumin. Yeah, I sold my Lumin figure already. Barbara Pack, there are no takers. Because nobody cares about her. She is like one of the least popular characters in the game. The, the same can be said about Lumin because that is the main character after all, like one of the most boring characters. <laughs> and until today, this figure is still sitting around in my studio. Yeah, waiting to be taken by someone else. <laughs> well, not to mention, I bought the regular version, not the Kotobukiya exclusive version, which comes with an extra faceplate, which I'm not bothered with, making it even a harder sell, right? <laughs> If any one of you in Malaysia wants this figure, let me know. I, I'm open to selling it to you. Moving on to the next one. Ah, this Miku figure. 1x7 skill Tony version by Max Factory came out in year 2011, March. Exactly 13 years ago. Okay, this one was around 7,400 yen or so around that ballpark over there. So you see, this was one of my favorite Miku figures. Was. Whatever Good Smile Company made back in mid or late 2000s, right? Yeah, the original, the OG Hatsune Miku figure that made by Good Smile 5,000 yen or so. This figure felt like a better version, an improved version of the Good Smile Company figure. So I was really excited when I pre-ordered this figure back then. I waited for her arrival and the figure was incredible. Like there was virtually zero flaws on the sculpt as well as the paint work on this figure. This figure made me respect Max Factory so much. But the problem with this figure was the weight. Very unbalanced weight distribution. Very similar flaw to that Dark Angel Olivia figure earlier, right? Except this figure wasn't glued to the base, but it wasn't good enough, you see? So from this picture, it is not very obvious, but if you turn the figure around and you look at it from other angles, Mm, no. Okay, let's take a look at this picture over here. You can see that Miku is like, she is leaning backwards in a way because of her pose over there. And to make things worse, this figure has only her left foot plugged into the base. As you can see in this picture over here, which is quite uh, low resolution. Uh, let me show you guys. Yeah, there we go. The the base right here, right? So this is what the base looks like. And as you can see, only the left leg is plugged into the base. Two very tiny and short plastic pack, no metal foot pack over here, right? And the right leg virtually has no support at all. And then there are two additional plastic rods to lift up her twin tail because her twin tail is also really heavy. Yeah, one over here and one on the other twin tail right there, right? So there are two plastic uh, rods and did you know what happened to this figure? It started leaning. Year one, year one, the figure was on display in my cabinet. It was like this. And then before it reached the second year, the plastic rods on both hair, uh, hair strands, they are like this. And then year three, it would bend further. And then eventually this figure can no longer remain plugged into the base. Like you plug the figure into the base, it would just pop and fall down. Yeah, too heavy. So basically, to display this figure, you need to buy extra maybe Figma bases, you know, with those uh, clamp or support gods, and then you need to add bases to this figure. So the figure just looks terrible when you display it because it would just fall over very easily. Like, it is such a shame because otherwise the figure's craftsmanship, the sculpting and everything was so well made only for the support to be a massive flaw on this figure. Yeah, it is such a shame because I still like this figure a lot otherwise. Moving on to the next one, we have Hayakawa Yuzuko from Good Smile Company from Yuzuko Peppermint. Okay, uh, this is 9,800 yen, came out in year 2010, 13, 14 years ago. Okay, this figure, this was really famous or infamous to be exact for all the wrong reasons you see. 
Early on, in my first year of collecting anime figures, as I told you guys, budget was an issue, so I went for the cheapest figure and regretted buying those Griffin Enterprise garbage. And then later on, in my third or fourth year of collecting figures, where my finances are a bit more solid, I started seeking out for premium skill figures, right? Back then, in the early 2010s, the most expensive skill figure by Good Smile Company, they maxed out at 9,800 yen, including taxes. We are looking at Black Rock Shooter or Saber Lily Distant Avalon, Saber, uh, Saber Triumphant Excalibur, and another one of them is this Hayakawa Yuzuko Peppermint figure, which was 9,800 yen, right? And my mistake was to ignore all of the complaints by other people on the internet. Good Smile Company does not often mess up their paintwork back then, right? This figure looks exactly as advertised by Good Smile, no problems on the sculpting, but the paintwork was quite the train wreck. For one, the chains, they do not blend, right? For example, you see, uh, this figure has chains surrounding her arm, right? Those are real metal chains. And they are normal metal chains, they are not stainless steel, so they do rust away in our climate over here. But the chain is real only on the arm section and everywhere else surrounding the entire figure, right? Yeah. From her right hand all the way to the base, that is PVC chain, not real chain. So there was this disconnect where you get real chain on half of the figure and plastic PVC chain on the remaining of the figure. It looks weird, like it doesn't blend, right? It looks inconsistent. But that wasn't the biggest issue with this figure. The biggest issue was the paint quality. Do I still have this figure? Yes, I do. I don't know where it is now. Like maybe it is stashed in my junk yard as well back at home. So there are two heads with this figure as you could already tell. This flame effect head over there, right? The paint quality on the surface was really bad. Like you see scratches, you see paint transfer and so on. The blue skirt on this figure is cast off above. It is the only removable part on this figure, but that blue color skirt will proceed to stain her entire legs with blue color paint. Like, the paint transfer problem is really bad on this figure, right? <laughs> Even when the figure is barely a few months after you bought it. Like, it is still very new, and paint transfer is really bad on this figure. So I had no idea whether it is the quality of the paint they used, or it is just a natural thing that this would even happen. I just don't know. She had a huge box and shipping was expensive. So eventually this figure bargain bin. Yeah. And moving on to the 10th figure that I regretted buying, right? Uh, I would say this is more of an entire series of figures rather than one single character. Okay, so the 10th figure I regretted buying, 1 by 8 skill Yagyu Gisen by Outer. What is so bad about Outer? Outer makes excellent figures. No arguments about that, right? 90% uh, of their figures are excellent. The problem was the franchise Hyakaryo Run, right? Hyakaryo Run was very popular back in the early 2010s. Two seasons, I had the Blu-ray actually. Season 1 was very well received. Animation quality was outstanding and it made many figure brands jump on the bandwagon, making many skill figures. Outer pretty much went for almost every character in this series, right? They made figures of every character. Every single Hyakaryo Run figure made by Outer, they were outstanding. No quality issues at all. I was very happy with every single purchase. But the disaster that happened to this series is the season 2 of the anime adaptation. Yes, I think the word disaster is even an understatement for the season 2 of Hyakaryo Run. Like, from episode 1 to episode 10, it was all out fan service of this dumb character called Naoe Kanetsugu. Uh, let me bring up the figure over here. Uh, Naoe Kanetsugu, yeah, this girl over here. This girl is the comic relief character of Hyakaryo Run. She was extremely dumb and stupid in the <laughs> uh, in the series and she was like yeah, causing trouble all over the place in season 2. Not to mention the first 10 episodes of Hyakaryo Run season 2 was pure fan service. Every character was trying to get into the pants of the main character. Like what is this even? 
The main reason why I loved series like Fate's Grand Order, Fate's Stay Night Heaven's Feel, even God Eater, is because I want to see the girls fight. I want to see them fight each other. None of that in the first 10 episodes of the season 2. We only get some very small fights in the final 2 episodes. And even so, all the super bad guys they have portrayed in the earlier parts of the series turned out to be not much of a threat at, after all. So, the season 2 was a disaster beyond your wildest imagination. It was one of the worst anime series ever made. The season 2 of the anime single-handedly murdered the entire Hyakaruran franchise. So by the mid-2010s, right, figure brands have stopped touching Hyakaruran. They stopped making the figures and the market value back then when season 1 has aired, the market value was pretty high. Their prices were going up after release. But the exact opposite happened. All of these Hyakaruran figures that were initially very expensive in the aftermarket, the value plummeted by the mid-2010s, right? So if you are looking for this figure of Naoe Kanetsugu, which I used to own one as well, fabulous figure, you can find one pre-owned for 3,500 to 4,000 yen. I'm not joking. You can find one for 4,000 yen pre-owned, this figure. And if you just want to collect high quality figures, you don't care how old it is, you don't care whether the value is high or low, buy Hyakaryu Run figures from 10 years ago. You won't be disappointed. They cost 4 to 5,000 yen each. Needless to say, I began selling off my Hyakaryuran figures by the mid-2010s. Most of them were purchased by my own friends and there was this one, Uesugi Kage Katsu. This was an exclusive, Hobby at Japan exclusive. She was still pretty expensive. I put her on eBay and someone from the US bought it from me. So all is good, right? I sold this without a loss, like I sold it at the price I bought it. That was how expensive she was back then. And then, yeah, I was lucky to have sold this one early because within a year, every single Hyakaruran figure have depreciated into nothing. There is only one single Hyakaruran figure which I have not yet managed to sell and we come back to this figure of Yagyu Gisen from Outer. Yeah, this was the one that I was unable to sell Partly because this is one of the least popular characters in the franchise, right? Like I said, many people out there when they buy anime figures, they only buy their favorite characters. I am the kind who go for the entire set. I am unwilling to miss out on certain things and it backfired on me. This was the remaining one figure I still have at home, still inside her box. I might take her out and display it in my studio at some point. I have already given up on selling this one. And even if I were to sell this figure today, 3,000, 4,000 yen, what is the point? Just display it, right? And that is all for the 10 anime skill figures I regretted buying. Well, if you included every single Hyakaryu Run figures I sold off, I think that is more than 10. But I wouldn't say I regret those figures as much as Yagyu Gisen. Yeah. So, do you have any figures that they were severely underwhelming? Like, you were so disappointed by it. After paying so much money for that figure, let me know down in the comments below, share it with me. What were your bad purchases over the years? I would love to hear it from you. Until then, if you enjoyed this video, yeah, give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for anime figure content every week. Until then, I'll see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.